Let's get the day started with the timestamp. It is uh, Tuesday, November 10th, 2013. The timestamp is it's 22 hours and 49 minutes into the day of Tuesday, November 10th, November, <laughs> December 10th, 2013. Let me just make sure that's correct. It's 22 hours and 49 minutes into the day of December uh, 10th. And actually, we're just getting our day started. I'm now starting to vlog right from the beginning of the day. I've uh, rearranged my schedule so I can do that. Uh, I forgot to my start the timer. <laughs> start the timer here. Whoop. She's too loud, isn't she? So I'm going to quiet the, uh, the, the, one, the cyborg alpha from you there for a bit. So we can have our discussion. Uh, I'm watching uh, Gen X Pen. Uh, what's, what you're going to start noticing is, and this is where some of the difficulty uh, comes in, is that my day isn't uh, standard. And I think this is sort of obvious if you watch a couple of BTS vlogs, that my day isn't standard. And yeah, I'm just now starting my day at, at 11 o'clock. There's less than uh, an hour left to go before it's uh, December 11th, so this is going to be... Two hours of Vlogmas 10 and, <laughs> and, 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 and and more of Vlogmas 11. But tomorrow is going to be again, it's going to be the same thing again. What happens every couple weeks, my time when I'm sleeping, my, my sleep schedule shifts. And it doesn't shift by, you know, 12 hours. It shifts by a couple, of, it moves a couple hours forward every, every two to three weeks. And as that starts to happen, my days start to flip around. So imagine your day slowly rotating around that 24-hour day. So sometimes you're sleeping during the day, sometimes you're sleeping during the night, sometimes you're sleeping part of the day, part of the night. Uh, and so what's going to happen is you'll start seeing probably tomorrow, because I have to do food shopping tomorrow uh, in, in, in the morning. And because it's going to be the end of my day, rather than having food shopping start the BTS vlog, more likely than not, the food shopping is going to end BTS vlog. And this is kind of how it goes. It, it, things basically revolve around the, the research desk really determines when I sleep, how much work I have to do, how, uh, uh, how far I get. If I find information that, I, uh, uh, that I'm looking at, and I find a good amount of information that I have to keep pushing forward, pushing forward, pushing forward, uh, and I'm saying to myself, five more, five more minutes, five more, five more minutes, and then I'll go to bed. And lo and behold, 18 hours later, <laughs> I still haven't gone to bed yet. Uh, yesterday was uh, one of those was one of those issues where there was an impediment to my sleep. I was supposed to go to bed around seven o'clock in the morning. But uh, what ended up happening is that uh, I'm waiting for a delivery for uh, to redesign my heating system here. And my heating system, like everything else here, is put together from bits and pieces of different things. It's, it's a custom design system. It does work, uh, and rather than being a forced air system, it's known as a thermal, thermally dynamic balanced system. In other words, rather than forcing air through the, uh, the unit, uh, you find a balance where the natural airflow is. And then as you find that natural balance where the airflow is, you'll find in this natural balance of airflow, you'll find pools of hot and cold. Airs, air will pool in particular places and then it flows between different places. If you can find the pool, you either heat or cool the pool. And the other alternative is you can either heat or cool the stream. The, the air flowing between the two. And either one of those two uh, mechanisms will actually heat or cool the entire place. In other words, you're looking at, at heating not on a single mass of system that forces air throughout the whole uh, throughout the whole house, you know, one single heat, but rather a distributed heating system or cooling system that heats specific points in the thermodynamic system. And that's kind of what I'm building here. 
Uh, and sometimes it works okay, and it works very well, you know, it, it, it cools the place well, or, or heats the place well. Sometimes you make mistakes and you have to make adjustments to it, and that's what's happening now, is I have to make an adjustment to how I'm heating things. Uh, and it, it, it's basically adjusting it just one or two degrees Fahrenheit, and I use degrees Fahrenheit rather than Celsius. Celsius is a good measure if you're measuring large quantities of things. If you're, if you're measuring chemistry and stuff like that. But when you want to measure in terms of human values, uh, in terms of what you find comfortable, not comfortable, the best scale for human, in terms of human relations, in, in, in terms of human's understanding of the scale, is Fahrenheit, because Fahrenheit, we do, we, you can say, okay, I just want to move a couple of degrees. But where if you talk about a couple of degrees in Celsius, you can actually be talking some a, a more significant move than you're talking about if you're talking about uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Degrees Fahrenheit are a much finer move in terms of the smaller point percentage points as compared to uh, um, uh, uh, degrees, Cel degrees Celsius. So, anyways, this is the opening segment for today. Uh, we have four segments per day. That gives us 30 minutes. I'm going to try not to go over. Uh, the weekend vlog went a little over. It was about 40 minutes in length. Uh, but then that's the, when the weekend, the weekend vlog. Uh, I'll eventually get this right. I'll eventually start putting more elements in here that are more exciting. Or at least try to, anyways. Uh, well, that's about it for now. I do have to get my day started. There's a lot of work to do in the kitchen diner and uh, on uh, Cyborg Alpha Mew and on the research desk. There's a number of things that I have to get done. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> See you in a bit. I thought I'd try something new. Uh, no, Not really necessarily new, but uh, uh, this is, is about rolling the uh, video comments into uh, the BTS vlogs. And, uh, I'm keeping the research desk active. I got my documentary up there in the background. And I'm at Jim Penn's page, and she has things that, uh, uh, at her video, uh, things I don't understand. And so I think I'll do a response video. past uh, midnight yeah it's um 13 minutes into the day of december 13th 2013 it's wednesday um uh, and the day has actually started um within about a half hour of getting up and sort of uh seeing what was around uh and what needed to be done uh, i'm now back uh working uh the kitchen's operational uh, i've got uh two things going on here i'll show you the work desk uh, I've got a documentary up top uh, on the uh, British coastline. It's from BBC, and I've got uh, I'm watching Gen X Pen uh, down below. I'm watching her vlogs. I'm a vlog type person, and uh, uh, I really like that. And let me show you this for a minute. This is uh, how Cyborg Alpha Mu is set up here. There's two of them here. This one is is fully configured. This one has still has to be configured. There's still work that needs to be done on that. Uh, and uh, this is where the countdown timer is supposed to be, but uh, I kind of forgot to start the countdown timer, so <laughs> that's how things are going to end up working out. But that's all right, because this is a short thing. I'm just here to show you, that, uh, tell you that we got started, I'm started, and um, uh, the rest of the day is going to uh, proceed. Uh, if that was the end of the story, basically, I'm really gonna uh, make a little breakfast now. See the Jurassic or the Trice. Once the breakfast so is going, I'm watching both of these things. The uh, then I have to decide uh, how. I'm going to do the reconfiguration because there's more reconfiguration that has to be done, more organization that has to be done, and then there's also some cleaning that has to be done as well. So all these things have to be sort of fitted into uh, the day, and then also at the end of the day, uh, I'm probably going to end up going food shopping unless, of course, I get that shipment that I'm waiting for. The shipment that I was waiting for never came, uh, so uh, I might have to spend tomorrow uh, waiting for that shipment. I'm not really too sure. We'll see how things go uh, and so we'll go from there anyways uh, back to work <laughs> back to my research desk and I'll see you in a bit
So she says, Hey guys, it's Jess. So I rarely leave my bedroom, but when I do, I realize that people do some really weird things that I just don't understand. That's why today I decided that I would talk to you guys about some of the things that people do that just don't make any sense at all. So let's get started. So the first thing I don't understand is I don't understand why people clap when a movie is over. I just don't get it. It's not like this is a live performance. This movie was filmed months ago and none of the people are in it, nor are any of the people who have any part in it in the movie theater waiting for your applause. You're literally clapping for no Seriously. Okay, so flopped in the theater. I not everyone would necessarily on their own start applaud, uh, applauding. But the thing is, a lot of times, if you're in a crowd and the crowd is doing something, uh, most people will end up falling on. So. Uh, because Liverpool at that time Let's say uh, a row of people shipping trade. <laughs> so there was some start clapping, someone next to them start seeing they start clapping. Soon every, soon you'll see everyone start clapping. In other words, what you'll see is if, if you pay attention to the clapping enough, the applause enough. You'll see that it starts off with a smaller group of people and then eventually migrates through, through the entire theater. So in other words, what you're seeing is you're seeing uh, group compliance to a particular norm or a uh, Standard, but of course they had to pass the scaries, and then uh, hopefully that's that what you think when they were heading. If they the feel board. they don't so do really that, somehow the of the boys, does it? people are going to think poorly of them. In other words, this is a really sort of anywhere, uh, come from a, if you want to call it group behavior. Mm. In other words, you can, you can mm. <laughs> if, if you if you want to understand it and add it to a psych, add it to a psychology experiment, you can actually experiment with this stuff. So I don't know, have some fun with it. And then, no, uh, uh, this, she also had said this to say. The second thing I don't understand about people is when people comment first comment on a video. There is no award for first comment. Yet people still continue to write first in the comments. I just don't. Yeah, I've been there. I've, I've. No, I really have been there. A lot of times, when you go by a video and they say uh, rate, comment, subscribe, uh, if no one's there, uh, sometimes just to be funny, you'll leave first comment. Other times, uh, it's if you're by a popular channel, you go by a popular channel on a regular basis, and you're so a lot of times you're 300 or 400th in line to comment. In other words, these people, these uh, YouTubers, have a lot of comments on their videos. Uh, sometimes it's just, you know, <laughs> if you get there early enough, you go, "Yay, first comment," or, or something close to it. I don't. I, I've never really gotten first comment in terms of being being the first one to see a video on a popular video uh, channel. I usually come by a late, later on, and sort of. Even today, the physical. And the closest I think I've ever gotten is uh, 27th. And even even that of. Well, uh, but yay, 27th. Uh, but Evan Thomas was just kind of uh, in a joking spirit. Ready? Let's get with the uh, time and date stamp. It's uh, let's see, seven hours and five minutes into the day of Wednesday, December 11th. And for those of you who are wondering about the time and date stamp, or more particularly about the time stamp. Uh, you can tell the time normally by 7 a.m. or 7 p.m., uh, but uh, more often than that, when you're dealing with uh, research and stuff like that, or even military time, military time, I never got the hang of, uh, I actually think it's improper, to, military time is improper, because uh, you don't have 1,200, 1200 hours in a day, you only have 24 hours in a day. So basically, if you look at time in this proper 24-hour format, it's not 0700. It's seven hours and six minutes into the day of December 11th, 2013. It's not 0700 hours. Uh, because for, in order for it to be 0700 hours, you'd have to be 700 hours into the day of uh, into the into the day of December. <coughs> December 11th. You know, if you're a military person out there and you're watching this, uh, let me ask you a question. Let me know when it's 700 hours for you. You know, when 700 hours have passed <laughs> into a particular day. Uh, uh, you know, otherwise, uh, well, the timestamp here is going to be scientific. It's going to be, uh, and it's not. It's not scientific. Doesn't mean it's hard or it's cryptic. 
It, <laughs> it's very simple. It's seven hours and seven minutes and now seven minutes into the day of December 11th. That's not complicated. So instead of using AM and PM, you use uh, the 24-hour clock. So now it's uh, no. <coughs> it's uh, <coughs> seven hours and seven minutes uh, here in uh, Toronto, Los Angeles on the West Coast is four hours and seven minutes. Uh, in Athens, Greece, it's 14 hours and seven minutes. So in other words, you can get get an idea of how things end up working out on the 24-hour clock. You know, you just go up to 24 hours. As soon as you get to 24 hours, you're back at zero again. <coughs> so, <coughs> <coughs> and things have been a little rough today. Uh, I'm now just now finishing the last edit on the uh, weekend BTS vlog. And that should go up in a few hours. Basically, uh, the time to go up is uh, between 6 o'clock in the morning and 3 p.m. That's your upload time. That gets you out to the, mo the, average, the average person so they can see it in their feed properly. Uh, beyond that, uh, <coughs> if you upload on, on other times, it doesn't go out, get out to as many people. Not as many people would see it if, as, as you normally would if you put it out during the day. Because <coughs> sometimes, I know this with myself, with, with social media and the feeds, uh, there is so much content coming through that if something comes doesn't come in when I'm looking at it, and chances are I'm not going to see it. So uh, even if I have some notices, no, you, you know, people have notifications on, like I have the notifications on for Google+. Plus. There are like a hundred. There are like a hundred notifications come in almost every single day. How do you go through all that one hundred? No, you know all those notifications. So I think there's a bit of a sort of a information overload with the social media. So the best way to sort of get your stuff seen is uh, get it up using again scientific so we're, we're, uh, using probability. The time when most people are probably on. Um, Looking at his stuff is between the hours of between 6 a.m. and uh, and uh, 3 p.m. So that's your standard time. Uh, I don't know if anyone in Tokyo is going to sort of be watching what I'm doing. So <laughs> uh, I use the North American time to sort of figure out what I'm going to do and when I'm when I put stuff up. So I get the greatest possible area of, and uh, possible uh, viewing area. I, I want to thank people uh, on a particular group that uh, uh, that sort of invited me in. Let me just go to the uh, let me get up here for a minute here. Yeah, there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch of uh, people now. Uh, Follow me on uh, is was initially I think it was from from uh, Peter what uh, uh, yeah yeah Peter Peter Wesley uh, Bassbone he invited me into a particular group uh, he's put it together a channel I guess for people who want to watch reality TV shows uh, and his invitation was you know I looked looked at it looked, said it was good thought it was good idea so I uh, joined the community. And uh, it's actually turned out proven, proven to be pretty good because uh, I'm getting a lot more shares, a lot more attention is, is coming to my is coming to my stuff. So I am starting to build a larger audience now. Uh, now that I'm sort of past that 100 part, but now it's, I'm past 100. The goal now is to get to 200 in terms of subscribers and bring my viewership up on a more regular basis. Uh, and that's sort of that is a, a, a challenge. There is a challenge of bring to bringing in viewers and keeping the viewers here. And I want to, uh, if I don't get to, you, to thank you personally for those for those of you who are sharing my stuff, uh, I do want to thank. I, I do appreciate it, and uh, uh, I will try to mention this every every now and again. Uh, <clears throat> it is that sometimes things get so nuts around here. They're so so crazy in terms of the work, the, the amount of study that gets done. Uh, that uh, it's hard to remember what you're doing or what you're supposed to be doing when you turn the camera on. So <laughs> even though I may have it written down uh, to say thank you, it's not necessarily there. 
And I'm trying to get these more organized so that I can reply more to uh, notifications that are sent me, to messages that are sent to me. But it's going to take me some time to get everything organized. It's going to take me a couple months to get everything properly organized on the research desk, get the research desk going again to a, you know, uh, a really good pace. But as I said before, then this is what typically happens. Every few months, I have to go back in and reconfigure things again because new stuff is coming in. So, we'll see how things go. Uh, I'm almost finished uh, with the cleaning work in the kitchen diner so that it is photograph ready so it can, be, it can be photographed and filmed in there. It wasn't before but now it's getting there. It's just a matter of a little bit more work and it'll be okay. Uh, anyways, this is a slow day today. It's not going to be anything quickly, anything quick today. Uh, I don't know, for some reason, uh, just around 2 o'clock I got knocked out. So, uh, I'll get through it. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Uh, now what else did she go on about? It's a little island of Anis Patrick or Patrick. Oh, understand, and I don't think it's ever going to end, and I don't know why this is still happening. The third thing I don't understand is when you're at the dentist and they have all these metal thingies in your mouth, working on your teeth, and they ask you questions. First of all, and then went on to found the Christian Church in Ireland. The dentist. The dentist is always a popular one because uh, we don't always know what the why the dentist does what they do. Uh, more often than not, the conversation with the dentist is not necessarily a conversation. Of human a lot of people are terrified of the dentist. <laughs> there, is an, uh, there is a real phobia about dentists. And so a lot of times the, 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 the conversation that you have with a dentist is simply to distract you from what's going on in your mouth. In other words, it's like, you know, the kid comes in with a boo-boo and you want to sort of distract him from the pain or whatever's going on. There is, you know, you have a lollipop, you have a clown there, you have a little puppet there or, or a stuffed animal to distract the kid from uh, whatever is going on, medically speaking. Uh, the conversation with the dentist is exactly the same thing. It's the adult version of the clown. <laughs> 35 years after the production, the old boy <laughs> if you will. So that's kind of where the dentist comes from. Uh, let's see what else she goes. What, what else she says about this? Well, I'm pretty sure my dentist does not care about my life, so I don't know why he's asking me these questions. No, it's just simply it's to make you feel comfortable, to make you feel that you know that you have some degree of generation in my family that I work of my parents work here, and when I was born, there was an announcement comfort system. Here means that I've got a job. Oh, this is about yeah. the, the headphones. Yeah. 700 yeah. people that live on the My headphones well, out. Listen to what they're asking me, bit. answer the question, put it back in, it and it's just like a repeated the problem. The fact that and then I don't want to be rude, so then I have to take my headphones out, listen to what they're asking me, answer the question, put it back in, and it's just like a repeated process over and over and over again. Without Wilbert, I would most definitely have yeah, to move uh, away. Yeah. That would be a disaster. So she's wondering about uh, why people ask you questions when you have headphones when you have headphones in. Uh, what I've noticed is whenever I have headphones on, that's when people start talking to you. I don't know why that is. It just so uh, that does happen. And um, but then you know, I don't know. I guess if you're if you haven't pulled enough all-nighters to the point where you're exhausted and you don't really care about what people so are talking about we'll in terms of uh, <laughs> if you have to keep taking headphones out, then uh, I suppose it does bother you if someone does something that's kind of annoying or doesn't notice that you're listening to some music. But then again, you know, uh, I think once, once someone starts asking you a question or have, has a conversation with you, with, or trying to have a conversation with you, they feel that maybe if you're in a crowd with people and you're listening, uh, or, or you're with a group of friends and you're listening to your headsets, that you're being left out, you're being sort of antisocial, and they're trying to include you. Uh, I, I've seen that before. I've seen that where, where people feel that you're being left out if, if you have your headphones on, and you're in a group of friends, you have your headphones on, you're listening to music, everyone else is talking, and they see you by yourself, they're listening to your headphones. They start having the conversation. What? Look, because they, they don't want you left out. And the purpose, their purpose is to not have you have your headphones on so that you can be included in the conversation.
for a conversation uh, because you're feeling left out. So, <laughs> but as I said, if, if, if you've done enough all-nighters, if you've, you've pulled enough all-nighters, these annoyances, the pet peeves, are actually become minute uh, compared to your exhaustion, and it, go, it goes away eventually. About uh, 13 hours and 31 minutes into the day of uh, uh, Wednesday, December 11th. Yeah, this is the last uh, segment for this BTS vlog. I'm still waiting for a shipment. I don't know if it's going to come today. I hate when waiting for shipments because uh, you have to sit around all day long waiting for the shipment. And in some cases, it could be all day long. Uh, it was supposed to be here yesterday. It never showed up. So now, today is the second day. And if it doesn't show up, I'll just call the company tomorrow and ask them where the product is. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go to bed. And we'll see what, how, how much sleep I get tonight. Because it's, it's the end of my day, basically. Alrighty. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Democratic Earth. Earth.